Faith for a Mate, How Three Women Met Their Husbands. Finding a suitable husband can be one of the most challenging aspects of life for many Christian women. There may be various reasons for this. Fewer men in church than women, more singles than ever before due to the increase in marital breakdowns, or the culture of postponing marriage till later life. A more subtle reason, however, are the ways that women have been wrongfully taught about how relationships are initiated. The long-term effects of such teaching may well be the single greatest reason for the escalating problem of involuntary singleness within the church, and that's the reason for this short Bible-based course. The first thing to establish is that the Bible is more descriptive than prescriptive about the subject of finding a mate, i.e. it gives examples, by way of stories, of how couples met, more than it gives precepts of how to meet. Why is that? Maybe it's because love happens in such a variety of ways that it's not worth being too prescriptive about it. In fact, according to Agar, Proverbs 30, verse 19, how a man falls in love with a woman is one of the few things in life he felt was too hard for him to understand. In this course, we will analyse the stories of three women in the Bible and see what we can learn from their stories. Then, at the end of the course, we will consider practical ways of applying the learning to our lives today. Lesson 1. Zipporah The first story is about Zipporah, whose husband was Moses. They first met at a well in Midian, after Moses had shortly arrived there from Egypt. The story, found in Exodus chapter 2, goes like this. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water, and they filled the troughs to water their father's flock. Then the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them, and watered their flock. When they came to rule their father, he said, How is it that you have come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us from the hand of the shepherds, and he also drew enough water for us, and watered the flock. So he said to his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. Then Moses was content to live with the man, and he gave Zipporah his daughter to Moses. Okay, so let's analyse. Zipporah and her six sisters arrived at the well with their flock, expecting to draw water for them. Some shepherds at the well gave them a hard time, but Moses, seemingly without any prompting, stood up for them and helped them by watering their flock. And that was the end of the incident, until they arrived home and spoke to their father, Rule. Rule is more commonly known as Jethro, so we'll call him Jethro from now on. Upon arrival home, Jethro asked his daughters how they had arrived home so soon, which means they had done this task before, perhaps regularly, and it had noticeably taken a shorter time that day. When the daughters informed their father about Moses, Jethro responded with what appears to be two rhetorical questions. Where is he? And why is it that you have left the man? In other words, how can someone, a stranger in fact, be so kind to you in an adverse situation and you fail to show him the appropriate level of gratitude by inviting him home for a meal? Good question. Why was Zipporah and her sisters so economical in their gratitude? Were they shy, fearful, unthankful, naive? Their reference to Moses as an Egyptian could suggest they hadn't even asked Moses his name. And before we question if it was reasonable to expect seven women to invite a kind male stranger home for a meal, Jethro absolutely expected them to do it, so he certainly didn't feel it was unreasonable. But how about Moses in this situation? Often it is said that men should be the ones to take the initiative to start a relationship. Well, there's no suggestion that Moses' actions at the well were motivated by anything other than kindness. But let's just suppose. Suppose he was even partially motivated by intentions towards Zipporah. Her inadequate response to his heroic actions prevented him from going any further. He had gone beyond the call of duty, gone the extra mile, created an opportunity for friendship, and she had shut it down. Was it reasonable to expect Moses to pursue any further? The story could quite easily have ended there, and Zipporah would have missed out on marrying one of the greatest men who ever lived. But thankfully, Jethro saved the day. He perceived what Zipporah hadn't. Not only did he understand how to treat Moses in this situation, he perhaps saw the opportunity of a good husband for her, and a nice son-in-law for himself too. But perhaps the most significant part of this story is the end. Jethro felt so strongly about the issue that he instructed Zipporah and her sisters to go back and fetch Moses. In other words, he was saying to his daughters, you failed to do what was appropriate, you go back and make amends. What an important lesson to learn from a relationship that almost didn't happen, but culminated in the marriage of Zipporah and Moses. Music